All right, guys, there's one case that needs us to revisit. This is the case of the Msundwe women, the Msundwe rape victims. So if you've been on social media this week, you've heard the outrage from the people who are bashing the Women's Lawyers Association for pocketing millions from a case that was supposed to be pro bono. And this is in their own words. In the end, they're pocketing up to 250 million to share amongst them when the victims in the case are going home with five million each. Now, the, the facts of the victims itself uh, will, will come later. For now, I'd like us to go back in time, back to the time when the uh, uh, the rapes happened. So apparently the police went to Sundwe, which was restive at the point to quell uh, 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 the disturbances there. In the end, they ended up raping up to 18 women. And these are the women that uh, admittedly got to be composited. The, the numbers of the raped women could be more because some people don't like to admit that they have been sexually violated. We, we know this from, from history. Uh, so they could be silent victims out there. We also, however, have to question uh, the, the modus operandi of what happened to get to this composition though, because... Yes, women were raped and and a lot of money is being uh, uh, given out to the women to be compensated. But why is there no single police officer being arrested, being held criminally liable for raping? So this is a very curious case. And and before people get to being offended with the, the, the women uh, as lawyers getting away with so much money, I think people need to go back to the, you know, the due diligence of the case and, and the the, the way it's been handled. You know, where are the rape kits when the women were raped? Uh, did the hospitals preserve evidence? Can these women identify the rapists from a group of police officers that went there? I, I know every police uh, station has got a log, you know, when, when there's a disturbance, you are allocated. So on this particular day, I think they sh they should have been like an, a commanding officer saying, uh, Officer A, Officer B, Officer C, get in the car. You are going to soon uh, to quell the people, and and they know how many rounds they ch they discharge there. They know which car they took to go there. So if if the police officers went there and they raped up to eighteen women, I believe one officer raped one, then this should be a clear cut issue. So. Mr. Kadadzela, who is the police uh, spokesperson, can tell us more. Why are the police officers that went to Nsundwe still working? Why are rapists still working? There should be some heads rolling. Otherwise, the, the, the people will continue to question if they were ever actual rapists. Already the story is being told online is that some, some of the women uh, had forged uh, uh, medical, medical kits, you know, the, the, the evidence that they produced that they were uh, uh, raped, uh, some people say, some people say, uh, uh, are fake. So can can we revisit this story? How did we get to this judgment? Why are so many people being compensated with millions of quatch, which I believe will come from taxpayers when uh, uh, there they, they are no rapists going to jail to you know do the time for the crime? So all this is huge contradiction. Coming back to the issue of the women pocketing so much money, you, you could understand that the fact that, that they were awarded costs. I know lawyers don't come don't come cheap, but Jesus Christ, they they announced it themselves. Many people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're doing a very good job standing up for these women. Uh, and, and pro bono was all over the social media back then. You know, they they also did the same thing for uh, rape victims from Chikwawa or something. So. They, they did the announcement, and now we hear from another lawyer that they, the, the women lawyers were being funded by the UN. So in, in this context, uh, the women lawyers really need to explain their actions here. And and maybe the, the Sunday victims themselves should come out and say, look, if, if we had known that uh, you, you would be taking home so much money in cost, we would have taken a cheaper lawyer, you know, because maybe most of the money would have gone to the victims instead and not to the lawyers. So these these women went out there and said, ah, we, we will uh, represent you. And then they, they, they happened to be so expensive. 
well, the government could have provided a, an actual pro bono lawyer, you know, from, from the legal aid. So th this whole story is confusing. But what I'm, what I'm, what I'm more intrigued about is the, uh, uh, the crimes themselves, what happened back in Sundu. And and before I finish before I finish this one, I just need to make a point about Nsundu. I've been there twice. I think one of my mates has got a, a girlfriend there, so we went to visit and stuff like that. It is a very dangerous area, and thuggery uh, reigns there. So, for example, uh, in one instance, say another village dressed up in yellow garb, and they came to a market and they, you know, vandalized everything they could. They got everything they could. They grabbed money. People were running for their dear lives. And that was it. This was like in, in the old Viking days in Europe when you could just invade another village and get what you want. But this is happening in Sunda. Just people dressed up in Yao coming to a market and robbing and taking anything they wanted. And then these people organized another group to go to that village to do the same. And I remember uh, there, w there was a DPP officer who stood on a, on a DPP ticket. After he lost, he had to flee Sunday because people were after his life he left in the middle of the night because people were, were baying for their blood so I'm not justifying the fact that Nsundwe, uh ha had some actual victims in this case but we should also paint uh, the, the, their militancy now w when you bring this issue back to the table and the, you, you notice that when, when HRDC was, was having demonstrations uh, in, in the city they, they got most of their uh, militant marchers from Sundwe. So this is, a, this is coming to be like an evil triangle where you have HRDC using Sundwe and then HRDC helping MCP and Sundwe being an MCP base. Actually, when, when, when MCP got into power, they had a thank you rally in Sundwe to, to thank these people who could come into town with clubs and machetes and stuff like that. Stuff that we, we used to see with the, the DPP people back when, when DPP used to be in power. So it's, it's all very you know confusing but easy to see what's happening here. And one would not be, one would not be blamed if they said it seems like the government uh, and, and everyone else is... is turning a blind eye to the injustice that is happening here in terms of justice to justice, in, in terms of uh, letting the rapists uh, run scot free just because they just want to composite um, the people from Ping, from Sundwe, just because they, they are, you know, overwhelmingly MCP. But this is not what a democracy should be like.